Hey guys, just wanted to do a reaction video to the CW Suit Up Extended trailer. So there was like a teaser trailer that came out. It was supposed to be teasing the return of all the CW shows. Um, I think essentially it was a 10 minute teaser, so I didn't really do a reaction video or break it down because I feel like there wasn't really much to break down or analyze. shows coming back next week with Supergirl premiering on Monday with four new episodes and then it's going to go on another hiatus in which Legend of, Legend of Tomorrow will take over its Monday night slot um, with nine new episodes to wrap up their season and that's because Tuesday night is going to have feature The Flash and then Black Lightning um, for um, essentially which is, you know, their season, their premieres, their pilot's going to be next Tuesday after The Flash. And that's why they're, they're shuffling the times between Supergirl and Legends, especially since the latter has a shorter season than the rest of the CW shows. And then, of course, Arrow will resume its new episodes in its regular Thursday night slot nine, at 9, 8, 8 central. Um, this is supposed to be a pseudo trailer. People were thinking, uh, theorizing this would be another superhero fight club trailer like they had last year and the year before to promote the new shows. This is what I'm kind of hoping for. I'm going to watch it and break it down and hope that's exactly the case. Yeah, this will do. You guys ready? I was born ready, Hoss. Okay, let's suit up. Let's hit it. Hold up, hockey mask. Vibes is getting ready to get ready. Work is hard work. They say the suit makes the man, but in my case, the man also made the suit. <laughs> I prefer to keep it simple. Unlike Harry Allen over here, who still needs a shave. Wait, when when you said suit up, you meant like right now? I'm hungry. Yes, now. We've been suiting up for 20 minutes. I mean, am I the only one who suits up one leg at a time? Well, yeah, it's a skirt, so. I don't have to deal with legs and zippers and stuff like that. Okay. Everybody's got time for a suit. But nobody's got time to wait for the new guy to charge up. Okay, so it was more of a suit up. It was just a suit up um, trailer, not really a Subira Fight Club um trailer that was a little disappointing but still not bad trailer and nevertheless it looks like that um that incline it used like if you saw if you watch that again you saw the incline that um there were um i think some of the superheroes were appearing on it kind of and the other end of the hallway it almost looks like kind of similar to the speed lab set on uh, set of the flash it almost looks like they just brought in some um, lockers and whatnot, and did some like redesign, redesigning to look like it was somewhere else. But it looked like a out of the same set, or at least a similar design set. I don't know. I could be wrong. But to me, um, based on that incline, based on that um, entryway from one end of the, um, you know, locker, lock the quote unquote locker room. It looked like. They were filming on the set of the um, the Speed Lab. They just brought in some lockers and you know rearranged some stuff to make it look like it was a different location. Um, 
That being said, I was not expecting Black Lightning to show up because it was been, it had been announced several times, including by the stars of that show and executive producer Mark Guggenheim. I don't know if he's I don't think he's working on that show, but it's um, they mentioned that it was not supposed to be part of the Arrowverse, or at least wasn't considered in um, there really be any crossovers between the shows anytime soon, especially considering that all the Arrowverse shows take place, um, or, or like all the shows are filmed in Vancouver, Black Lightning sold in Atlanta, and all the, I've watched like plenty of Q&A panels at, uh, plenty of YouTube videos with the cast members, um, doing convention Q&A panels saying what a logistics nightmare it is, especially trying to having multiple versions of the cast on the same multiple having cast on like multiple lead shows because of the fact that it's not like they ever shut down production to ever do crossovers especially crossovers like crisis on earth x they still have to um film their respective they still continue filming their respective shows um concurrently with their um you know, annual crossovers, they just have the actors about to put in like extra hours. So it even got to the point where um, season three, episode six, Midvale of um, Supergirl, like the major reason why that was mostly a flashback, focusing on teenage versions of Kara and Alex, is because they, have, they needed uh, it just made just so they, um, if gave um, Melissa Benoist and Kyler Lee more availability to work on Crisis, Crisis on Earth X. Um, and so again, it will already be, it, I mean, it was enough of logistics night. I mean, it was, I mean, it was just a tall order to have, um, Barry Allen appearing on super season one of Supergirl. Um, even though, especially considering that at the time they were on two, not only on two different networks, but Supergirl was also on CBS and filming in Los Angeles at the time. And it only changed networks and filming locations as a cost save, as kind of a cost saving measure more than anything. Um, so I don't see it have you know Black Lightning being part of any major cross ups um, anytime soon, especially considering the stars were wanting it to wanted to make it more kind of like a street based show, kind of focused on you know helping out. With the title characters kind of focus on helping out his community, on um kind of like Luke Cage and not necessarily wanting to be you know you know so much about like you know trying like a big scale um on still focus on like saving the world just kind of trying to improve his own community and trying to make a difference on a smaller scale which is I guess is why another reason why I wasn't part of the Arrowverse. Um, maybe down the road it will, um, at this point, you know, given that it's filmed at, it's filmed, it's not being filmed in Vancouver, like the rest of the era for shows, I'm assuming that that's, it's definitely not going to be take place as part of the Arrowverse. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm fine with that just because it's, I'm more, it's already a struggle for me to keep up with. Um, the four shows, well, there's a lot of, most of the shows I watch, whether it's superhero or otherwise, so, you know, given that these are not interconnected, kind of helps, is like a, uh, I guess it's a, a double-edged sword, um, you know, I'm gonna do, you know, reaction videos of Supergirl, Flash, um, Black Lightning, Arrow, um, I don't know... You know, I'm going to try to see if I can continue doing reaction videos to other shows like Walking Dead and um, X-Files. It's all going to depend on my schedule. I might not be able to do every episode. Or it might have, they might just have to be reviews. Or I just might, or I just might not do reaction, might not do videos at all just based on um, my schedule. Just con considering that it's kind of obvious just based on my views that you guys prefer that you reaction videos more than just reviews um but yeah it was cool watching everybody suit up it was cool to see um kit flash on um, becoming part of being or along with the rest of the heroes suiting up but i mean i guess the thing is is that um 
I don't know. It seems like he he's been Kid Flash has been such a minor character this season, and I've not really been the biggest fan of Ralph Dibney. Ralph Dibney. Um, I just feel like it's just not much of a trade off to have um, you know, um, you know, replacing Wally with a, a guy who just feels kind of like he's too much of a knockoff of Barney Stinson. And I've been through this, too much of this back and forth in season three of The Flash in which they have um, the token jerk of the group start off at, start up as start off as a jerk, then get to character development become nicer. But it's like they went through too much of this with Julian in season three, where it's like he starts off as a jerk. He becomes nicer. Next episode, reset button, a jerk, nicer person, reset button, jerk, nicer person, reset button, jerk. Nicer person. I'm not really in have a patience or in the mood to go through this with Ralph Dibney. And, and, and considering the fact that he seems so sexist and skeevy, that it's clear that in hindsight that he just seems like he was a mouth, mouthpiece for Andrew Kreisberg, given that he was fired for his sexual misconduct. So he doesn't seem like he would be out of place. And I'll go so far as to say he wouldn't seem too far out of place in, you know, on, you know, on How I Met Your Mother or on sex on a sitcom or um, even on Michael Bay movie, considering how he's been characterized because I don't think he's, I mean, he's funny some of the time, but it just feels like he's a character who just seems like out of place on a show like this and not a good fit considering this is supposed to be more of a family friendly show. And I just feels like, you know, at first I thought he was going to be around for a few episodes where they kind of build up his character and then you show up sporadically and then they bring back Wally, but apparently it just seems like they care more about this character, developing this character more so than Wally because I felt like they listened to, the writer listened to the wrong criti criticisms about, you know, I know it's like, oh, they have too many superpower people on the team. It's like, um, there are too many speedsters on the team. Um, Wally was the only other speedster on the team um, regularly, Jesse and Jay only show us sporadically as guest stars, and it's like you still have super powered people on the team between you know, um, Killer Frost and um, Ralph being elongated man, Cisco and Barry himself. So, I don't know what they're the writers are trying to accomplish by addressing that criticism criticism, or what the writers were trying to um, or what the fans were like wanted out of it. It just almost feels like we're getting to the point where um, it's almost like the DC fan base is becoming like the Star Wars fan base in which they, you know, in which people are like so divided on something and they, they, they just, you know, they don't even know like what they want out of this, what they want out of the shows or what wouldn't, and what would like, meet their expectations? And what would be make it good for them? In my opinion, I just that's that's how I feel. Uh, but you know, anyway, a nice cool trailer. Um, you know, I'm a little, you know I wish Legends was going to be coming back next week. Um, so I'm going to wait till February. I'm excited about the other shows coming back. I'll be interested in checking out the pilot for Black Lightning. Um, but anyway, guys, what are your predictions? And also, especially, I think the premiere I'm most excited for, it would be the, um, the Flash mid-season premiere, especially after I just learned that, spoilers, that the Trial of the Flash storyline will be lasting for more than one episode and won't be wrapped up, just like um, Barry's time in the Flashpoint timeline, which, and... And also won't be wrapped up just how I know a lot of people complained about how they felt like Barry's time in the Speed Force was kind of anticlimactic and ended too soon. So that's so now it's be lasting, you know, for at least, um, you know, two episodes, apparently. So I'm glad to hear that. But anyway, guys, what are your predictions for the show for the show once they return to once they return leave your thoughts in the comments down below if you like this video like share and subscribe and i will talk to you guys soon take care